Good morning. So today what I want to do is talk a little bit about something that I read in the news this morning. And see, that just goes to show why I don't read the news. Uh, but, you know, I was browsing it for something to do. And I come upon a headline and I want to read it verbatim. And before I do that, let me let me tell you that this is not normally something that I would cover on my channel. I try to stick to strictly cold cases, particularly older ones. Although I have been dabbling in the Idaho for uh, a while since that happened. Um, and True Detective Talk, when I was doing that, you know, I would do some current news stuff but then I stopped and but this is worthy of my aggravation today Penn State professor accused of committing sexual acts with an animal in PA State Forest now I'm pretty much a big believer in being able to do what you want to do to live your life. You, you got one life that you live, as far as we know. I hate people that have to slave away at a factory or a job that they hate. I hate that they have to do that. I really do. I admire it tremendously. I admire that almost as much as our veterans. Hard-working people get up and go to the steel mill, the factory, work eight hours a day, whatever it is, construction even, and really work. Uh, I admire that. I admire it. And I don't like that people can't do what I do. You know, I'm fortunate that I can do this, you know, investigations, whether it's for this channel, for families, for law enforcement, for television, for books, uh, for, and previously for law enforcement, you know, I, I've just done, I've been fortunate to be able to do it because I love it. And when people don't do things they love, I, I, it bothers me because I think everybody should have that right to do something that they love. Yet, as with everything, there's a line that's drawn that can't get crossed. Now, who decides where that line is. Well, that's where law comes into play. That's where rules come into play. And sometimes I believe that's where morals come into play. When I read this morning, now we got enough shit going on with Penn State, okay? Penn State's my home. Penn State football. I mean, I don't follow it as much as I used to when I was a kid. And it's just because of I'm busy with other things. But Penn State football is in my heart. Always has been. Penn State University. Uh, all the way back to John Capaletti. The only Heisman Trophy winner from Penn State. And, you know, Blair Thomas. I mean, I, Paul Pelesny, Shane Conlon. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of people that I admire for the play Penn State football. But then, you know, we get into the Sandusky thing. Greek car. There was a professor that had killed somebody up there not too long ago. Betsy Artsma. She died, I believe, in the Petit Library. Uh, Dana Bailey. Uh, then uh, the girl had disappeared on Halloween. Um, and this is where old age kicks in that I can't remember. That Cindy song. Um, just a lot of bad things. But you know, you have to take that into context. It's a big university. Okay, so you're going to have some things that are nefarious that take place. Yet this, 
Penn State professor accused of committing sexual acts. So what this Nimrod did, he went to a forest called Rock, Roth Rock State Forest. Now, I've probably been there, but the name just doesn't hit me right away. And he was observed on April 13th committing sexual acts with his dog near the restrooms at the state forest. Now, this is according to a criminal complaint filed by the State Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. He was identified by park rangers by his North Face backpack, which was visible in the camera footage. The backpack was also present in images depicting his, his name is Themis Matasukas, age 64. The backpack was present with, in the images depicting Matasukas nude from the waist down, except for socks and shoes dating as far back as 2014. So this has been going on for a decade. Number one, I don't understand how it took him 10 years to finally catch this guy. Uh, he is a professor of chemical engineering and earned his Ph.D. from Michigan and has been with Penn State since 1991. He's written several books, published dozens of journal articles, all the academia stuff. I'm not going to read it because it doesn't impress me. It shouldn't impress you either. But he's been relieved of his responsibilities and he's on leave. A search warrant was conducted at his home on June 9th and... He was visibly nervous. These are in quotations. Visibly nervous and repeatedly told the rangers, I'm done. I'm dead. You don't understand. I do it to blow off steam. Are you kidding me? You can't go out and shoot a gun? You can't go lift weights? Play basketball? You gotta have sexual relations with your dog to blow off steam? And not just that. You can't do it in the privacy of your home. You have to go get naked in a state forest by a restroom where other people can be to do this? Now, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm, I'm miffed. But, as always, the reason that I'm putting this on this channel is because what? It's a teachable moment, okay? I want to illustrate how it is that people feel. Everybody has a desire, a need. In this case, to blow off steam. We all kind of have those, right? It's, it's in the free will that God gave us. We have free will. A serial killer has this quench. He doesn't know why he gets off by taking the life of somebody, strangling them, watching you know their life leave their body. But they do. They know it's wrong, and they push it down. But at some point, it explodes, and it comes out, and they do it. It's akin to, let's say, your desire to have coffee every morning. And let's say one morning they banned all coffee. It says it's bad for you. You can't drink it. And if you do drink it, there is going to be a heavy price to pay, which could be forever in jail or maybe the death penalty. But you have that coffee left over in your cupboard. You're in your home. You might listen to the guy for a couple of days, maybe, but then eventually you have this desire, this quench of thirst. I want that. I need that. It does something for me every morning. And so you go and do it. Now I know that's a heavy analogy comparing drinking coffee to a serial killer, but if you think about it, it's, it's the quenching 
the desire, the thirst. Now, let's look at idiot professor here, okay? Who's obviously from another country with that name. Um, and that's, you know, you get offended by me saying that. Well, tough shit, go somewhere else. I'm not trying to be uh, ignorant, it's just a fact. I'm guessing that he's probably uh, from a foreign country. That don't bother me, okay? Let me get that straight. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, but the reason I say that, maybe if you look at customs from his country, maybe that's not against the law. Obviously, he's been doing it at least 10 years. Now, it doesn't say what kind of sexual relation it was. Was it a relation? A relationship? I would classify it as abuse. So it doesn't say what type of sexual abuse it was. Was he pitching or was he catching? Was he receiving? Was he giving? It doesn't say that. And it doesn't matter. It's all the same. You have some sort of problem and you are teaching our children in a prestigious school every day about chemical engineering and then you're going home not in the privacy of your own home but you probably did there too you're going out to a, a state forest where people hike people walk i could bring my children there and you are getting naked at least from the waist down by these images but you still have your shoes and socks on, which makes absolutely zero sense to me. And you're having sexual relations with your dog. The older I get, you know, I, I try. Like Billy Jack, I try. You know, that scene in the ice cream shop of Billy Jack. If you've never watched Billy Jack, just you have to go at least watch that scene. It's, I try to not be violent. I try not to direct anger. But I must say that if I came to Roth Rock State Forest with my child or without, and I came across a 62-year-old man naked from the waist down, having sexual relations with a dog and I saw it the amount of bruising that would be placed upon this man would be probably in the Guinness Book of World Records if there was such a record established already and if not there would be a new one it leaves me speechless but again it's a teachable moment and that teachable moment is this you never know what goes on at someone's house behind closed doors or in this case in the open state forest public land Okay, you're sitting in class, you're being taught by this guy, and you don't know what he's doing when he leaves his dark desires. Same with Ted Bundy. Think about it. Am I comparing this guy to Ted Bundy? I, I, I can compare anybody to Ted Bundy. It's about the desires, and they all seem like they're great people when you're interacting with them, people you don't know. He's a great person, man. I talked to him at this party. And then you start dating him and realize, oh, man, he's a jerk, chauvinistic asshole. Right? That's because people portray different things. They portray what they want you to see. But in reality, it's different than what they see in the mirror. So... The teachable moment besides this Nimrod, who not only should be fired, he should go to jail. 
And I'm glad that this made national news. And I hope that he never gets another job again. Now, is that harsh? Yeah, it is. But he's gotten away with this long enough. That he's doing it in a state forest. To me, that shows arrogance. I can do this. This is what I want to do. Nobody's going to do anything about it. Until they get caught. And then all of a sudden, the tears start coming. Oh my God, my life's over. I'm ruined. Well, good. It should be ruined. You think that dog wanted to sit there and take that? Freaking gross and disgusting. But that's besides the point. Please be careful. Please look at your surroundings. Please know that the person that you're talking to, no matter who it is, has something in their background that is cringeworthy that they do or have done or plan to do in the future. It's a fact. Just be cognizant of it. Just be aware of your surroundings to keep yourself safe. How many people would let him dog sit? How many people have let him dog sit? Now let's not think about animals for a second. Think about humans. That's why I don't let my kid, and I never did, be babysat anywhere by anybody other than my family. And even... You know, even then I try not to. Not because there's anything there. It's just because I'm so non-trustworthy. Because I've seen this shit. I've seen what humans are capable of. And it's my job as a father to protect. It's like it's my job as a father to my dogs. To protect them. And not let this guy around them. Right? Just be aware, folks. Life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a mean and nasty place and it'll beat you to your knees permanently if you let it. You, me, nobody hits as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Well, I just digress big time there. I went all the way off to Rocky Balboa land. Anyhow, hey, teachable moment. Be safe. You can trust people, okay, but be very wary of them because you never know. Everybody has those dark desires, things that you don't know about in their past, cravings, desires. Just be aware of it. It's a teachable moment, and don't let this guy anywhere around any animal in your life and I hope that he suffers the repercussions of his gross disgusting actions but don't let it be an indictment on Penn State I know Sandusky already did that but Penn State's a great place okay it is just try not to bring your dogs up there on campus why this idiot's there hey thanks for watching this unusual episode of Unsolved No More, Mains out.